Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hirul Dadia. We have with us Mr. Vijay Kanan, former chief executive at IBA, joining in. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kanan, and always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you. Uh, to start off with, overall, with regard to the banking sector as a whole, Mr. Kanan, a lot of measures that the RBI took in the initial stages of COVID, and that's something which actually came to our rescue. Now, if you go to see, all eyes are on how the credit growth pans out. We are hovering in that six to seven percent range. What's your view from here on? Uh, as you rightly mentioned, I think uh, the uh, uh, credit growth has been muted. Uh, credit growth has been happening mostly in the retail sector. And uh, in fact, if you talk to any banker or anyone in the market, they think they are growing very healthily uh, in the retail sector. Uh, but you need to understand that the retail sector, especially the individuals, are dependent on either salary income and or the entrepreneurship income. That means there has to be some industry and company which has uh, that to, to employ them. Uh, while the existing people, there's a lot of uh, uh, switch in jobs, etc., and people are getting good jobs, but there is still a lack of new industries coming up. And that is the cause for concern. If you, see, if you remember, uh, before 2014-15, the growth used to be around in the range of 9 to 11%, 12%. Mm -hmm. Whereas the entire thing has been muted right now. Uh, I can't really blame on the uh, pandemic alone, but uh, we have not seen any new industry coming up. Once the new industries start coming up, I think the growth also should be quite healthy and uh, much better. And uh, the uh, focus of the banks, uh, which has been substantially towards uh, retail, will also get distributed to some uh, something towards the industries. Uh, having said this, I think there has been a, a sort of a caution from by the uh, uh, bankers, both public sector and private sector, toward the industries. And uh, from the industry side also, uh, there has been a lot of delivery. So a combined fact, uh, combined factors of all these factors together. Uh, ensure that the credit growth is there, positive, but more in the retail sector. Right. So overall, Mr. Kanan, right now the expectation is that the credit growth that will come in is going to come in from the PSU companies because they are the ones who are actually doing the capital expenditure. However, what's the view that you have, especially on the private sector front? Because the capex that is required to drive credit growth from the private sector front as well, that's yet not started to happen. You see, uh, what happened, the, there's been a, a lot of caution, both from the uh, bankers, uh, lender side, as also the uh, borrower side. And uh, most of the uh, corporates have now started deleveraging. But I think the deleveraging cannot go on forever. And they need to start uh, expanding. And uh, especially when you look at uh, certain sectors like the, uh, the road sector, the cement sector, the industries, uh, all of them will start, once the normalcy comes into being, I think they will all have to expand. And once the expansion takes place, then they need to, they cannot obviously get everything from the, uh, from uh, equity capital. Therefore, they need to raise it. And raising equity capital is much more expensive because the cost of capital, uh, equity capital could be as high as 25, 30%. Whereas a debt capital could come uh, uh, sub 10%. So that being the case, that will be a demand. Uh, the, I'm not actually seeing any uh, green shoots uh, in the horizon about uh, new industries coming up. Uh, it all dep depend on maybe, as you rightly mentioned, if the PSU starts the uh, ball rolling and uh, they do it and then they find that, yes, truly there is a pickup in the demand, etc. then the private sector also will uh, join and uh, then you'll have a much healthy growth. PSUs have been borrowing even in the recent past. Uh, but uh, you know that cannot really be called as a huge credit demand. But I think uh, the private sector have to create the demand. The very fact that the government is also going for privatization also means that the, the the quality of the credit and the efficiency of the use of credit could also be uh, make a difference once it goes into private sector. So I think we need to wait for it. But today I don't see anything starting in the next 24 months. Mm. Right. And overall, with all of this, 
you know, what's the view that you have, especially with regards to uh, the restructured book is concerned right now? And, you know, especially if you have to take into consideration the asset quality first, uh, we don't really see any risks on the horizon on the asset quality front. What is your take, number one, on it? Yeah, uh, we, we need to uh, uh, the uh, asset quality in three different areas, uh, or I'd say four areas. First person is the large uh, corporates. And, mm. large corporates and large, I think, uh, we don't see any fresh stress. That could be some occasional uh, cases. But uh, by and large, I think everything has been handled uh, in 2015, 16, and 17. And uh, they are all uh, either under resolution or under liquidation, both ways. And all the banks are provided. Therefore, there won't be any new provisions for that. And uh, as per the RBI guidelines, uh, restructuring for this large corporates beyond a particular scenario, except under the uh, uh, provisions of the uh, uh, COVID, uh, would they be treated as an NPA. But we don't see too much of a stress in the large corporates. In the uh, small sector, I think they badly needed it. And they were the ones who got affected most. Uh, you know, you look at the hospitality sector, the, those sectors which are dependent on education, construction, and uh, I'm not looking at the 10 crores and 25 crores, I'm looking at the smaller ones. They have been uh, most affected and uh, wherever they've been affected and people do not have alternate uh, means of uh, raising funds, or alternate means of uh, revenues, they've all gone for uh, restructuring. I expect about 90% to 95% of those stress assets uh, to actually come out or uh, repay their assets uh, on time. Provided, of course, uh, I need to put a word of caution that there's no third way or any requirement of any further uh, closure. So that is, uh, we were all quite confident that sometime in November, December, and then the Prime Minister also mentioned that we had conquered it, but you know what happened in March, April. And then the second wave struck and then it became much okay. more severe than the first wave. So uh, if we uh, set aside those things, I think, you know, uh, they will do well. Uh, the schools and colleges are reopening, uh, which is uh, also a healthy sign that uh, the transport sector would also do. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I was just mentioning the other day, the best uh, thing to notice whether the uh, economy is picked up is to see the Chaiwala the Dukan. If there are uh, people um, uh, milling around the Chaiwala Dukan, it basically means people are starting going out yeah. and people start going to the uh, uh, offices. And uh, the step out there of the office for a cup of uh, cutting chai and uh, uh, the snacks, uh, which I, I, you're seeing a lot. But uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, in dining uh, restaurants and all is still not fully picked up. It's still uh, uh, empty. I think maybe people have to come out of the slumber of uh, uh, having been at home for the last uh, almost two, two years now, and that will take some time to pick up. But uh, the hotels are also working. They're also working at 30, 40%, 50% capacity. Uh, but certain industries, especially where they, are, they were having a boom time uh, just before the COVID, they may uh, still continue. But uh, it will be, be a long drawn process. And theater industry, that has been affected. And yeah. Wherever the government has interfered, uh, saying that we should not uh, have crowds, and crowds have been there. Malls are there, open. But uh, you find more of a uh, window shopping rather than actually footfalls to uh, pick up. There are cases that picking up, people are picking up. But yes, uh, slow and uh, slowly and steadily, everyone is uh, walking into this uh, shops and all. Diwali could be a, a early indicator how things are pan out. If we don't have any any further cases going up, I think I think uh, the worst would be our uh, 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 away, and then. The worst is uh, out of the way, and then we should be doing very well. Right. So, Mr. Khan, overall, from what you're saying, you know, again, a lot of people are projecting the NPAs of banks to say increase to eight to nine percent in this financial year, though it will be below the peak of that eleven point two percent that we saw in the year FY eighteen. Now, we're talking about the COVID relief measures that were given out in terms of restructuring, or you talk about the emergency credit line guarantee scheme. Do you think all of this could help restrict growth uh, from here on? Yeah, uh, uh, see, the uh, restructuring and uh, the emergency land credit has all been given to the interesting companies uh, which were uh, suffering. 
And uh, believe me, I think uh, when you talk to many of the bankers, they say not a large number of people have taken. You know, there, there's a good number. I'm not saying it's not there at all. But uh, many people have uh, somehow felt that they do not want to uh, have the tag of research. Mm -hmm. They have somehow uh, managed to uh, keep afloat. <clears throat> and uh, they are in a position to either raise funds from their own uh, areas and uh, other sources and mm -hmm. pay the loss. Uh, new credit growth is not uh, taking place. And that's, uh, that, as you said, is hardly 5-6%. So that will be the case to happen till the large corporate come. And I don't uh, see uh, that 89% could be selective in a few banks and few areas, but not a uh, widespread. It will be much more, uh, much more than what it was there before the COVID, and because in the COVID, uh, effectively shut down many of the shops. And uh, after the first wave, we found uh, a lot of people who are dependent on migrants. They were also affected, you know. And uh, uh, you don't, uh, the migrants uh, may not be very highly skilled, but at least they got used to a certain uh, uh, quality of and quantity of work and getting a new person to start uh, a fresh will be a problem and many of them have uh, come back also I do see around that uh, many of the people have come back uh, if that uh, will be, uh, the uh, NPS will not go up but uh, having said this I don't know what's the quality of the research because uh, uh, if you're expecting that uh, everything is going to be hunky-dory pre-COVID from starting now, it's going to be a very yeah. long haul because, as I told you, restaurants and uh, eateries they are hardly up to 30 40 percent, and uh, that has been a good source for employment as also a lot of debt. Also, uh, around you and around us, I think you must have seen many yeah. of the shops uh, changing hands, uh, which is an indication that some of them either have uh, thrown in the towel or some people have felt okay, uh, enough is enough, and someone else has come in place. In the same uh, activity, but uh, hopefully uh, thinking that uh, the uh, entire thing is off. In fact, I saw some new shops coming up post the first wave, um, but uh, closed down post the second uh, second wave. So uh, it's a very uh, difficult situation, but things uh, should be improving going forward. Right. So, Mr. Kanan, overall, you know, if you talk about restructuring as well. The anticipation is it's mainly the MSME and the retail segment that is likely to see a higher accretion of NPAs and stressed assets. And again, a four to five percent of the loan book that would lead to growth in stressed assets uh, from this book is what everyone is anticipating. So overall, what do you I mean, how much of the restructured books can then slip into NPAs? What do you think should be taken into consideration? Yes, the past when the teaching was done, it was done uh, relatively more perfunctorily. You know, you had almost 30, 40 percent or 50 percent to becoming MPA mm. in six months to one year. But this time around, hopefully, of course, uh, there have been some uh, conditions of which can, cannot be restricted beyond, uh, beyond a particular period and all. But if all of them have been liberally given, I think uh, I won't expect more than five to 10 percent of the restricted book to it could be slightly higher, but uh, I think uh, it all depends on when you open up the uh, the uh, economy completely. <clears throat> the more and more you open up, and more and more things are feel people feel comfortable. And uh, just through your channel, I would again like to say that you know people should get themselves vaccinated, and then and that will give you some uh, physical and psychological comfort for you to face uh, any scenarios. And the very fact that more and more, yeah. more than have been vaccinated, that has given given some confidence to people to move around also. So I think uh, all said and done, I think I don't expect more than 10%, maybe a couple yeah. of uh, yeah. up six and book to fall. There could be some initial slippages where uh, things have not started. But uh, in case the activity has started, I think it will not be much. And the figures which is coming up so far from the, some of the banks doesn't speak of any very large increase in NPS. We we'll have to see how the public sector banks also do it. Right. And and what's the ground level report do you have that tells you about the pain in the mortgage segment? What's your view on that? On the mortgage segment, you have yeah. the housing, housing loans you're saying. Correct. Uh, see, in fact, uh, you see a lot of activity now. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to one of the uh, investors and he says, I expect that uh, the NBFC uh, and the uh, housing finance 
to uh, go a big way uh, because I think the the prices of the uh, uh, flats and all are stabilized, and now with the uh, kind of rera kind of uh, uh, focus, uh, uh, the compliance with rera etc. will ensure that the the builders also are in a position to complete the uh, the projects on time. I think there will be there's more confidence in projects coming. But having said that, I think uh, the builders also need have uh, deep deeper pockets. Uh, the experiences uh, of uh, many of the uh, buyers in the past, that you, they found that projects have not been completed for years together or even decades, uh, would mean that people are looking for projects which are either completed or near completion. Therefore, that is one uh, issue. So, but uh, if you complete it, I think you will have your higher margins. But then it means that you have to uh, the builders have to shell out more. So that is a uh, which we'll see. And once the reputation of the builders come up, I think people will start going back to uh, booking at the stage of uh, booking stage itself rather than at the later stage. Mm -hmm. Right. And very lastly, Mr. Kanan, what would your view be on the interest rate cycle? Because the RBI has continued to remain accommodative so far. Uh, right. Secondly, in terms of where liquidity goes, we don't think so there'll be any additional liquidity infused into the system, taking into consideration the quantum that is already existing. So by when do you see the interest rate cycles turning for us? I think uh, we have probably seen for now the uh, bottom of the uh, interest rate cycle. Uh, I won't say that it's going to uh, sharply rise, but uh, if you talk to the bond markets, that uh, the bond dealer would say, oh, it has risen very sharply from 610 to 615 or 625. So uh, because uh, that portfolio gets uh, negatively uh, marked, uh, marked the market. Uh, but I think uh, with the abundance of liquidity in the system, uh, I think uh, the uh, the interest rate will remain uh, flattish. Uh, I do expect that maybe that could be a one call for a interest rate hike uh, in this uh, financial year, uh, but uh, certainly something in the, in the next financial year. Uh, all uh, depends on so many factors, mm -hmm. uh, government spending, the government uh, deficit, how they are in a position to raise the taxes, as also in here, and unfortunately for us, the oil prices have also been going through. And you okay. and I had uh, uh, buying uh, diesel and petrol uh, above 100 for the first time in our in the life. So that is going to further affect the profitability of all the ventures who are dependent on transportation. So you know you have a cycle where uh, the funds are available, but then you know your cost of manufacturing, other than uh, uh, interest, is going to go up. Uh, by uh, the uh, means of the oil prices, the, even the wages are going to go up because uh, overall the inflation, the, uh, the retail inflation is going up. The uh, wholesale, uh, the uh, mortgage sector, the, it's just inching up. It's not really going up. So mm. I think it's more or less at uh, pre-demonetization levels or mm. before that. So that is not really uh, hurting them. But uh, going forward, that that might. So I have a feeling that the interest rate will remain benign. I won't say it will go down, but it will not uh, go below uh, 6.25, but it will not go above 6.75. So I would put a range of 6.25 to 6.75, the 10 years. And it does affect, uh, what do you call, uh, people like me who are retired, who have to depend on uh, interest saving. But uh, well, if the overall cost is coming down, that's very well for that seem to be the case. So that could be a scenario where RBI would be forced to uh, hike the interest rates uh, marginally. Yeah, uh, yeah. And as you mentioned, uh, they have already started uh, uh, becoming less accommodative than what they were before with a little bit of uh, withdrawal of the accommodation chance. Uh, overall, they, they will continue to see accommodation chance till the actual good credit growth pickup happens. Yeah. Are a very sharp uh, increasing inflation. Absolutely. You know, well made point as well, Mr. Kanan. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to speak to you, get insights from you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. Stay safe and speak to you soon again. Thank you, Hirai. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.